Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. As always, I hope you're keeping well. I hope things are going okay. If not, I'm going to send you, I'm going to start off by sending you a big hug because I know a few of you have been in touch. There's a couple of ladies who've got husbands in hospital and do you know what? Sometimes life, you know, throws us these things. So I think it's nice to start off with a big hug for all of us because at times we all need one, don't we? And it leads me on to journaling. I have to say, I do find being able to just spend time playing in my journal, it really helps me. Um, obviously, Carl had his operation a few months ago on his ankle and it's just this 12 weeks of him having this boot on and not being able to walk Eric or, you know, help out. You know, sometimes I do need to just a little space on my own. So the journal is just perfect for this. Now, a few of you have been in touch and we are getting to the end of this journal. Don't worry, I have another one lined up. I know, Roberta, you were asking if I was going to finish. No, we have another one lined up, so don't worry. But also, one of the questions quite a few people have asked is what happens when, look at this, you've got a lot of pages and your journal almost begins to splay out a bit here. Now, for me, I love this because um, for me... I just want to get in and open this and have a look. For me, a book or a journal or a scrapbook that, that's like this, that's got all these pages, I just think they're all things I want to explore. I want to open it. I want to look into it. But I can understand if you're worried. I mean, some people have suggested taking pages out. For me personally, that wouldn't work for me. I don't want to spoil the sort of... I think the way these are bound, once you start spoil, for me personally, it would spoil it. But again, if that's your solution, I always say you go with how you feel. Um, a few ladies have asked about ways of um, actually holding them closed. Again, for me, I don't need it. This sits happily on my shelf like this. But if you do, the threads, I've used a lot of our craft threads, look, for sort of my hanging little tassel bits. But you could actually use some of this beautiful cra cra craft, can't speak, craft thread and make yourself a little tie if you wanted, or elastic, you can get some elastic, it's ribbon, you know, you will find a way, but for me, I love the fact that my journal is just so chunky and I just want to open it and, and explore. Now, because I'm nearly at the end, I've literally got a couple of pages left. I'm sort of filling in spaces. So I thought I'd show you how I, um, and I have to say my bookmark has been very useful how I, the way my head works around these spaces. So this double page spread was a clean up from ink on one of my stencils, look. And on one side, I've got a piece that we did a while ago where we stamped our gorgeous um, Zen grass, I think this one is, um, and I put the Wow the Clear embossing powder over the top. And then we painted with our lovely powders and you can easily look back and have a look how we did that and so I need something to go on the opposite side so the way my head's going to work is I'm going to use blue obviously for my theme I want to go with the background you see what I thought it's no good me keep saying to you when you clean your stencil pop it in your journal if I don't come back at some point and show you what I would do with this now, it might be you just want to actually add some script on here. You might want to write something about this technique. Again, your journal is totally for you. And that's the thing, we're all different. But for me, I just fancy creating another piece of artwork on here. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. And I've got a piece of card, five and a half. This is multifarious, five and a half inch square. And I've already put a black... Uh, line round ready and I'm thinking I'm gonna that's for me the size to go on here so that's how we're starting and I'm just going to put my journal down next to Eric thought as it goes on the floor and I'm thinking I w because I'm going for blues I've got some blue colors here and in my elements I've got Della blue Blue at all, which is becoming such a firm favourite considering I'm not a blue girl, and midnight blue. And I'm going to start 
roll my sleeves up. I've got my big jumper on today. It's a bit chilly here in Holmes Chapel. I've had frost this morning, so... This is my Lavinia low tack tape and I always write inside mine just in case I have a couple of different ones and also I sort of need to know what tape it is and obviously this is low tack because I'd hate to pick up the wrong tape in a rush. So I'm just going to put myself a lovely board around and again this is an old technique. I would say it's as old as me, as old as the hills but I have to say it's one that you know, you can come back to time and time again. And that's what you journal. And I don't think I've actually got one of these in the journal. So it'd be perfect addition to my last few pages. So I'm just going to go all the way around. And just, I just find it easier if I just look. There we go. Check that's on. We'll get rid of that. And I want, the idea I've got is I'm thinking of having some shading. So I'm going to start building my colours up. And I want to go from light to dark. And it's just an idea I've got in my head. So I'm going to start with Della Blue. My lightest colour first. And I've got three stencil brushes. And we're going to go down in size. Or is it up in size? No, down in size. I have to think which way the numbers go. And we're going to start with my largest one with the lightest colour and work down to my smallest one for my deeper colour. And I think this will just help with my shading. Well, that's the theory anyway. Let's see. I've got my kitchen towel to lean on. So as always, get in that habit of stamping off in the lid. You'll find it just saves you know if you put it on a piece of copy paper then you bin it I just I don't want to waste this ink I love this ink and I'm going to start on my masking tape even though this is my lightest colour and just come in gently gently in this top corner and I'm going to go to about halfway down each side and just gently gently flick some colour and then I'm going to come in on the bottom same thing but this time I'm going all the way up the edge. I actually want more colour at the base. So I'll pick up a bit more colour. And I, sorry, if with the light we've got a bit of shadow. Not very light here today. So I'm going right along this bottom edge. And then I'm just coming in. When I've used some of the ink off, so I've got less on my brush, I'm just going to come more into the middle here. Sort of a blue haze across here. And I'm just working that ink on the card. Same here. And leaving an area in the middle that's light. Just check you can see that. So now we'll go to the blue at all. And this is the number seven brush. And again, I just want to gently flick a little bit of colour in this top corner. I sort of flick to start off with and then almost do a circular motion. Then I'm going to do the same in this bottom corner. Sort of flick to start off with. And I'm going to take some colour up the side, not right to the top. I'm always start in the corner because I want my corner to be deeper. And then just move along this bottom edge. Now I've got an idea I'm going to stamp florals. But you know what? This background would make a lovely background for so many different stamps that we have. So I'm happy with that. So we'll move that to one side and then we'll come in with our midnight blue and our smaller, our number three brush. Now remember, this is the deepest of your colours. So again, I'm just going to gently flick in that corner. So I'm going for less in that corner. And here, gently flick 
and then I want to come quite away down the bottom here, not right to the end. Again, gently, gently. And I want the ink to be less, so I'm almost fading it out. So I want the stronger ink in the corner here. Right, we'll pop the lid on that. Pop the brush out of the way. So if I bring that a little bit closer, can you see? I'm just going on that idea that we've got this lighter bit here. And I wanted to sort of make some atmosphere, but just by using the three different colours, and as I say, the three different size brushes, and it really helps with having the different size brushes. So I'm going to bring my stamping in, and I'm going to use VersaFine Claire. And again, if I'm going on the blue theme, I've chosen three colours, a light, a medium, and a dark. I do love having a good selection of VersaFine Claire colours. I find I'm using them more and more. So I'm going for Warm Breeze. Oh, that one's upside down. That's Blue Bell and Twilight. Must admit, I do use Twilight a lot. And for stamp choices, the first one I'm going to go for is the Wild Summer Flowers and the larger head, I think, to start off with. So we'll start with the Warm Breeze because, again, I want to add depth by trying to give a bit of distance. So I've just caught that block so we'll get Mr Inky Binky. So I'm just going to come in from the side here and we'll do a first generation and then possibly just a second there. And I just want a few of these. I don't want to overcook it. So I think one in that corner. Now I don't want to do a second generation for that because obviously if I did look, if I show you on here, we've got part that's almost first and part second. So we'll just have one more at the base, I think. And the thing to bear in mind here, when I'm stamping onto my masking tape, the ink will dry slower on the masking tape than it will on the card. So it may smudge. So again, just something to be, to be mindful of. And I'll just give that stamp a bit of a wipe and we'll pop it away. So the next colour is the blue at all. So when I change my stamps, I'm changing my colours too. And this one is the lavender. And if you're not sure how this is going to look, oh, I seem to have got a little hair, we'll get rid of that. You didn't see that, did you? Remember, you can use your, your acetate. So I'm thinking, shall I have it upright? Or I quite like sort of a bit of a, an angle on this card. So that's what I think I'll go for. So the lavender, we're going for our mid colour, our blue bell. So I think we'll go for some angle and then some straight and a bit of second generation as well. And just build up. Again, I don't want to overcook it with this. Let me have a look. Yeah, that's nice. I don't want too much. Maybe just a little tip down here, just in that corner, I think. Right. Walk away from that one. And again, I'm just going to give that a wipe and then pop it back. I always try and put them back on the acetate when I've finished. You know what it's like? How many of us misplace our stamps? Mind you, don't think it's us. I think there is a bit of a, a stamp demon that comes in and hides them from us. So now I'm going to Twilight, which is our stronger colour. And we're just going to come in with the field grass. Now again, the orchard grass is a smaller version of this. You could use that too. And this is a lovely light look stamp. Very wispy stamp. So it's lovely to just add that darker colour and we'll just add a couple of these, again, first and second generation, just to give that nice bit of, of depth through. 
and again so when I remember when we take this off this will be white so again I think that's a lovely sort of meadowy and I love that shape now to complement that shape I'm going to do a little bit of stamping up here I'm just going to wipe my field grass and pop him back I don't know why he's a him in my head he's always a him don't know why now I've got the lovely leaf creeper stamp here now there's two a large and a small and these are so useful I class these as what sort of unsexy stamps they're not the one you'd look at and go oh that's a fabulous floral I love that but you know what I use this so much and what we'll do is we'll build up in this corner with our three colours so we'll start with our lightest so we'll start with warm breeze and we'll just do I want to go off that sort of angle again that sort of corner and we'll do some first and second generation if I turn it round you can hopefully see where I'm going and then give that a wipe on Mr Inky Binky I know I'm going light to dark colours but where possible I really don't like to contaminate my ink pads so we'll add a few and again I'm just changing I am changing the colour but also I'm changing the angle so that it does look sort of more natural and then lastly we'll come in with just a few give that a wipe don't forget with our twilight so this is our stronger color we'll have one there one there i don't want to overcook this right and what i'm actually going to do with this is just at the base here i'm going to add a few and if i just bring that closer to show you why I just move this out of the way so here I think that will just make all the difference and with it being the deeper color I think it goes lovely with our shading that we added so I've purposely hopefully this is a nice shape I was trying to be mindful when I was doing my stamping to make that look an, a nice shape now a couple of things to remember here and again I just try and sort of help you with good housekeeping well, obviously, we're not talking housekeeping, like washing, ironing, you know, that's not the sort of housekeeping we're talking, craft housekeeping. I'm just going to blot this because, as I say, my Versafine Claire is a slower drying ink and it will dry even slower on the masking tape. So for me, I always blot my work. And, you know, I like belt and braces. So... The other thing I would suggest is, now I know the Lavinia masking tape is absolutely perfect look and will come straight off. But if you're not sure, and as a belt and braces, if you just run your heat tool over your work, two things, it'll help make sure that this ink is lovely and dry, but also it will sort of start to melt the glue on your masking tape. And your masking tape will literally just peel off like, look at that. I mean, as I say, the Lavinia is very good anyway. But, you know, belt and braces, pop that straight. And also, you're not going to get ink on your fingers off your masking tape. And then the last thing you want is to put a splodge on here. Because I have to say, look at that. I mean, I just think that is beautiful. Now, I'm just going to add, we're going to add this into our journal. So again, back to that belt and braces. And I'm going to use tape and glue. Just for me, I like that bit of both. It's just that added security. So pleased with that. I think that is so lovely. Now, again, if you're not, I know some of you are joining in with our journaling journey and you're not um, making a creating a journal, but this would make a beautiful card. Or what about a set of notelets? Just imagine you could do, this would be beautiful in greens, my favourite oranges. You know, you could make a set of, say, four notelets, but using a different colour tone. Or even a spring, summer, autumn, winter. 
do you know what honestly so many things we could do so either a journal or a card or as i say a notelet and this you've got space there ready if you want to stamp a sentiment but if i bring my journal back in just need to move my brushes to put it flat i don't know if there's any of you other with your large journals i have to say the space now normally would probably pop it in the middle but i think because this is a double page spread and if i just remind you i've put that one towards this side and one of my gorgeous stickers here so i'm thinking i could mirror that so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to get my glue and we'll, we'll stick this in Now our bittity boppity glue is a clear glue. Looks white, but it dries clear. And again, I've got my glue and my tape. And this way I'll just have wiggle room so I can pop it there, get it exactly where I want it, look. And then, perfect. And again, just try and get used to pressing it down with your kitchen towel just in case we've got ink on those fingers. Now, I'm thinking I'd like a little bit of sparkle on this. So if I look on my desk, I've got stickles and this one's cayenne, I think. It's not easy to see in the light. And I'm thinking a nice little bit of sparkle and I think we'll dab and dot this. So this is a term I've actually taken from, from plastering years ago when we had some work done in our house and around a fireplace and they were plastering and they were dotting and dabbing, something like that. But I think it works well with the stickles. So remember, it can be rude, so it can spit. So I'm just going to gently add a little bit where I would like it on my work here. I'll have a little bit up here and then I'm going to dat and dob it. So there we go. And that way I'm not going to overdo it, I'm not going to get too much and I'm just going to get that beautiful, we'll just dot and dab a bit more in that corner. Yeah, I like that. It's a very pretty colour that. I just like that finger on Mr Inky Binky, I think he needs a bit of, a bit of sparkle on him. And then so that my pages look nice together, I'm going to put one of my, now I've got a little, I've got my, all my stickers here in this pack look. And I think I want something, so I think the mouse here look pointing that way. What do you think? So if I grab my scissors and we hold it, look, because we don't want to stick it down if we're not going to like it. And I think the mouse just looking that way. Just on there, look. And then what I'm going to do is go round him. Now again, if you like to leave yours, but I just want to edge it. A, I think it'll make it stand out more, but also because I've edged that, again, I want to keep the whole design looking a nice and um, cohesive design. Now, if you remember before on some of the other pages, we've, we've actually added writing. So for this one, I'm not going to actually write a word. I'm just going to do some little random squiggles. And again, I love doing this. It just makes me feel, I don't know why, isn't it funny? I just love to do it. And there we go. So he's looking that way. And actually with my yellow Posca, I'm just going to add some little bit of yellow there. Come on, Mr. Posca needs a bit of a shake. And what I'm thinking is, with our stickers as well, let's add a sentiment. Hmm. 
Mm, right, the artist, sorry, I'm thinking. Do you know, do you do this? Do you get them out? I keep, look, every single one. I've got so many, right. I should have really chosen one before we started, shouldn't we? But I didn't know how it would, how it would. Moments like these or live in the moment. Live in the moment. Right, I'm going to make a decision. Seriously, this is the bit that I literally spend so much time in my craft room. And I'm, and I, I'm, which one? And I changed my mind. So we're going to cut this up so I can go across my two pages. So I'm thinking I'm going to have live there. And I'm going to have in the, there, and then moment over this side. So again, if you just bear with me, I'm just going to give these a bit of a nice scribbly border. Just to frame them. And then the final thing I'm going to do now, if you're happy with this, you can leave it like that. I'm just going to add a little bit of Posca splats. You know, I like my splats. I could do white, normally do white, but I'm thinking the blue sparkle will just carry on. So we'll give it a bit of a shake. And we'll do this page first. And what I'm going to see if I can get a few here and across that corner. Just a few round there and then a few. And for me, that just finishes it off. And if I just move across here and I make this a continuous there, look, round this and then across there and into... And let's just find the lid. Did we put it under there? So when I finished, I'll obviously take a picture and show you the two together. But if you look, I just think that is absolutely beautiful. And the two together, and I think we've tied it together nicely. And because we've gone with the blue theme, and that little bit of stencil work in the background is enough to have given me the inspiration to then do this whole design. And I don't want to add any more to the background because I don't want my background to overshadow my beautiful work, which I love. I mean, these stamps, I've got to be honest, how could you not love them? Now you could always add a the moon mask if you wanted for more atmosphere. I just wanted to leave it for me. I wanted to see if I could create the atmosphere just with the inks. And it's a great way to practice blending your inks. So I think I've only maybe got a couple more pages and then we can have our run through. And that may just coincide with some new stamps being released. So I think that would be a perfect time for me to start a new journal. Mm, can't say any more, but keep tuning in because seriously, March is going to be such an exciting month. Towards the end of this month and beginning of March, seriously, you are not going to miss anything that's going on. So I'm going to pop off now, get myself a cheeky coffee and maybe a cheeky biscuit to go with it. You take care, everybody. Have fun with your journaling. And as always, I'd love it if you'd share and tag me in so that I can see what, what you're doing, what you're up to. I'll see you again tomorrow. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.